Congress has gotten to a point where it's not doing anything, and we're all like, oh, how did it get this bad? How do you, how do you change the, the cultural mindset of an entire country? This is a question that over the past six years that I've sort of been doing peace movement, giving speeches stuff, I almost never got until this year. And this year, I can't go anywhere without getting, I haven't done a single event without getting this question. How do we do it? Isn't everything awful? How do we persuade people it's worth trying? This question in various wording. I, I get, that, right? get at every single event. So I'm not <coughs> criticizing no, you. I'm yeah. not pointing you out. I'm saying everywhere I go, seek out the, the, the news sources that systemically are not corrupted by money. Uh, and that seem to get things right time and again, and, and then trust what verifies, Ronald Reagan said. There are lots of good radio stations and good websites now. Um, I have a website called After Downing Street uh, where I try to collect useful news on, on war and peace and power and accountability issues, um, and you have to you have to hunt uh, for good information and sometimes uh, question whether information is, is believable or not. That, a brief overview of a general theme of the book uh, is that one of the problems that ought to be pushed higher up on the radar screen of our representatives in Congress and our public discussion is where power lies now. First, 60% of the U.S. Constitution is about the most powerful branch of our government to which the people who wrote the thing gave every power they could dream of, and it's the Congress, right? And Congress actually has powers if it chooses to use them to do things, including holding people accountable, including ending wars. Why did Alberto Gonzalez leave town? Why did Richard Nixon leave town? Why did we learn about Bill Clinton's sex life? The ability to impeach him. Yeah, Bill Clinton's sex life. That's that's our, <laughs> our conception of, of what this is. Even though you know, in, impeachment impeachment is the fundamental power that Congress has. The the other power that's that's a lesser power is the power of subpoena. And during the last Congress, not only did the Democrats announce we won't impeach you no matter what you do but they didn't enforce subpoenas. So you had dozens of subpoenas during the last Congress, 2007, 2008. People like Dick Cheney, Condoleezza Rice, et cetera, dozens of them, simply not enforced. Um, is a little known fact that any committee on either side of the Hill has the undisputed power to enforce its own subpoenas and contempt citations. Uh, that is, to use the Sergeant at Arms and the Capitol Police to go and take someone and literally hold them in contempt of Congress until they testify to the satisfaction of the committee. Any committee has the power to subpoena someone and compel them to appear and testify or hold them in jail until they do. Right? This is called the power of inherent contempt. The idea that a branch of government has the inherent power to preserve its own existence, which is how Congress members talked about this for the better part of US history. We think one of these torture planes that's used to rendition people spotted last month in England, uh, the president openly saying he, that he will use rendition, uh, openly saying we will detain people, let, let's be honest, to imprison people for life without charge, uh, and, and so on. And torture ongoing, torture ongoing in Iraq, torture ongoing in Guantanamo, torture ongoing forever as long as it's not treated as a crime. When Alberto Gonzalez resigned and left. It was because one Congress member put in a, a one-sentence bill that said the House Judiciary Committee shall consider whether Alberto Gonzalez has committed impeachable offenses. All we need is a Congress member to put in that one sentence on Jay Bybee. We start getting Congress members to sign on. We scare the bejesus out of the Justice Department and maybe get some justice out of them um, because an impeachment hearing takes down everybody. But Kucinich did present an impeachment hearing, I mean, an impeachment motion in the House, mm -hmm. and nothing came of it. 
Kucinich put in articles of impeachment on George W. Bush and previously on Richard B. Cheney uh, and got a few dozen co-sponsors, got more on Cheney than on Bush, um, but got uh, an absolute ban by the leadership. Um, you know, they were permitted only to have the pretend impeachment hearing. Um, with Gonzalez, you had him subpoenaed by committees on both sides of the hill and brought in and forced to embarrass himself, uh, if not perjure himself. Uh, you had uh, uh, this bill to open impeachment hearings uh, that was being signed on to by several dozen Congress members. I mean, over that summer break, dozens more were signing on whose names were going to show up on day one in the fall. Uh, and he became a liability. It became easier to get rid of him and replace him with another guy who would be just as bad, who the Senate was happy to confirm, uh, than it was to keep him around. Um, and th the same could work with Jay Bybee. But if you can't impeach him, just subpoena him, for God's sakes. Just bring him in uh, and make him talk. Um, but if you have an impeachment hearing, you can bring in anybody and any information and any document and any photos and any video. And as you know, we have two choices to get accountability on the torture. We get the photos and the videos or we teach Americans to read. Those are our two choices because it's all out in the written word, right? And obviously, getting the videos and the photos is going to be a lot easier than teaching Americans to read. So, you know, though in, impeachment is a way to do it. Um, so, you know, you can go to your Congress members. You can talk to them. You can lobby them. You can shut their offices down with phone calls and emails and faxes. You can go there with polls that show where their constituents stand and sit there and not leave and cough a lot until they, <laughs> they commit to a decent health care policy. You, you can pressure these people. You can challenge them in primaries and in general elections. Uh, you know, it's not fair. They're corrupted. They're bought and paid for. The media's against us. But it's doable. Uh, and so we have to work for long-term reforms, but we have to we have to do these fights as well. And that doesn't mean that's the only thing you do. It doesn't mean you don't build good media, you don't educate, uh, you don't uh, go after straight resistance of crimes like war. You know, all of the important issues we have to work on, nothing is going to have a bigger impact on the decades to come than where we leave the power to do what in our government. With a very few exceptions, uh, signing statements were never previously used the way Bush used them. And, and that was Cheney and Cheney's lawyer uh, writing those. Um, David Addington was, was writing those. And, uh, you know, signing, signing statements were hardly used at all until Reagan and Clinton. Bush and Cheney now going on television and openly laughing about having lied us into wars, uh, openly bragging about having tortured people, uh, and no penalties. We have to investigate people and subpoena them, which a House committee can do or a Senate committee can do. You don't need the full Senate. You don't even need any of the Senate. We have to impeach people. That's in the House. We have to stop funding wars. The House can do that, and then it doesn't matter. The Senate and President can can love as every war they see to love. They can't fund them. Uh, we have to stop bad bills. The health care bill now is a bad yeah, bill. bill. Yeah. In July, 57 members of the House, not a single one of them from Pennsylvania, but 57 yeah. members of the House wrote a letter that said we're not going to support a bill that doesn't at least have a public option tied to Medicare rates. Well, they don't have that now. It is, it is of incredible importance that some of them stand by their word.